Hey YouTube world, Harvest is Plenty. Hope all is well. Thanks for stopping by to check out the video. Now I was trying to figure out how many times have you guys heard me screaming into the camera or saying into the camera that nobody is coming to help you and that you are your own first responder. I've said that a litany of times that you have to rely upon yourself. Yes, it's great if you dial 911 and the cavalry shows up, police, fire, EMS, everybody, and they take care of you. Normally, that's the way it's supposed to go. But as we're approaching these end times, things are starting to break down and the world's becoming more and more chaotic. And the 911 system is failing. So don't count on it. You are your own first responder. Some citizens in the West Coast, in Oregon, and in California, they're waking up to this reality. As you can see here, the city of Portland tells residents to not call 911 except there's a life or death emergency. Imagine that. In the wake of a mass overdose that sent four people to the hospital, Portland City Commissioner Renee Gonzalez is now looking at when it's appropriate to call 911. Meantime, some Portland residents are frustrated that they can't call any time they need police help. All this as the city struggles to find enough dispatchers, operators, and police. K2's Megan Allison joins us live now outside City Hall after speaking with the commissioner. And Megan, what message is he trying to send to the public right now? Well, Steve, he tells us during that mass overdose event, dispatch received a lot of calls about the same incident. Moving forward, he's asking people to only call 911 if they witness a crime in progress or if someone's life is at risk. Commissioner Renee Gonzalez says right now it's easy for emergency dispatch lines to get tied up and leave people waiting. Now, Portland City Commissioner Renee Gonzalez, Mr. Commissioner, we appreciate you being here. When you go back now and read that tweet, do you understand how shocking it is to the rest of the country to hear those words from a major American city? Uh, yeah, but our 911 systems are overwhelmed right now. And so uh, we've got to confront this crisis head on. Um, we need to alleviate uh, a livability in our city. So we, we need to take a, a strong stand in uh, Portland livability, and the city council is doing that. How much of this is predictable uh, and preventable as it relates to Measure 110? Um, the decriminalization of drugs, it, it feels like Somebody would have said, hey, we're going to end up having a bunch of people on our streets overdosing on drugs. Yeah, well, part of the issue was this big promise of addiction services that was supposed to come online. And unfortunately, this got rolled out in the middle of the pandemic when our health authority was already overwhelmed. Um, and But that's what voters were sold on, that we were decriminalizing addiction, that we would stand up substantial state-level addiction services. Uh, that just didn't come about. I think that was the surprise. What was predictable is that Measure 110 would attract certain elements to the city uh, that were looking for that lifestyle. And as a city, we're taking a hard stand increasingly to push back on that now. I know you say you're taking a hard stand, and I appreciate that, but I can't help but think of the, the tens, if not hundreds of thousands of other residents who, who don't use drugs and who just want to be able to go about their daily lives and call 911 and, and get a police response. Don't they have rights, too? They 100 percent do. And, uh, you know, the combination of Measure 110, Ninth Circuit law on outdoor camping has really tied city's hands uh, to address these issues. And frankly, we were probably too ta tolerant and accepting as a city, uh, even without those things, on some of these behaviors that really destroy the ability for everyone else. You don't need me to tell you how bad things have become in Portland, but it, it's not just drug overdoses, right? It's the, the, the Nike store, Nike's hometown store closed permanently because of, of the crime in Portland. And now we're, I understand talking about making open air drug use illegal and trying to prevent camping and all these kinds of things. But isn't this a little bit like, uh, I mean, forgive the, forgive the cliche, but a, a drop in the bucket or, or closing the, 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 the barn doors after the horses are out. This doesn't seem like it's going to really do what it needs to do to get law and order, for lack of a better term, back to Portland. 
Well, it's going to take multiple steps. There's no two ways about it. And you need all levels of government working in the same direction. Uh, we've been pushing certain forms of judicial reform for the last decade in the state and in our county. We're now paying the piper for that. Um, some well-intentioned things have had some really negative impacts, including early release of property crime uh, perpetrators and uh, even drug sellers. That was before Measure 110. So yes, multiple steps got us here and multiple steps are going to get us out of this. But we do, you know, when we passed the drug ban in the city of Portland and arguably the most progressive city in the state, that passed 5-0. That tells you how much we're responding at the city level, but it's it's going to take a lot of little steps like that to make to turn this around. And not just in Portland, it's happening in California as well. There's a 911 calling crisis, and in Oakland, it's far worse than any other city or even county in the state. One man tells us that he had to wait more than 10 minutes to talk to a dispatcher. In another case, an Oakland police officer was stabbed, and his 911 calls failed to connect. Investigative reporter Candace Wynn brings this issue to city leaders. Oakland's 911 system is waiting to fail catastrophically. Those are words right out of this recent Alameda County Grand Jury report. Our investigative unit also analyzed statewide call records showing Oakland and another Bay Area 911 center are the worst in the state when it comes to answering times. Oakland emergency number 19. Hi, six in Jefferson, a police officer just got stabbed by a homeless person. Officer Danny Chor was off duty when a woman stabbed him in the neck. The profusely bleeding officer used his cell phone to call 911, and his repeated calls failed to connect, according to a grand jury report at the time. Yeah, a police officer just got stabbed. Okay. The caller is a waste management supervisor. You're hearing her voice because not only were the officer's 911 calls failing to connect, according to the report, her employee, a garbage truck operator who drove past the scene, also tried calling 911, and his calls also could not get through. You're hearing his voice only because he's on his supervisor's speakerphone as she called 911 for him. Details about this dangerous delay were published in the civil grand jury's 2019-2020 report, which was prompted by a complaint about long 911 call wait times in Oakland. In 2020, Oakland's average 911 answering time was 28 seconds, nearly double the state and national standard of 15 seconds. According to state 911 data obtained by the investigative unit, Oakland's average 911 answering time has gotten far worse. This year, it's nearly doubled to 54 seconds. I did call 911 and the uh, experience is absolutely horrible. Alan Liang owns an Oakland auto shop and uses this tow yard. He says he wishes his 911 calls were picked up in 54 seconds. But when I call 911, usually you're on hold for approximately 10 minutes. Before 10 online. minutes? 10 minutes before I lie. 10 seconds. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Just last week, Liang called 911 to report a missing person and says he was on hold for seven minutes. Last September, he found a crushed body in his tow yard, and this happened. So this is where I found the dead body a while back. I immediately dialed 911. I was placed on hold for maybe about 10 or 15 minutes. And that's after Liang says his 911 calls repeatedly failed to connect, just like what happened with the stabbed officer. If you call 911 and you hear that fast, busy signal, that means all the 911 lines at your local communication center are busy. Your call won't go through until one of those lines opens up. Wow. Imagine having to wait 10 minutes before you're connected to a 911 operator. Imagine what could happen in 10 minutes, actually five minutes, actually two minutes. That is crazy. They say when seconds count, cops are minutes away. I guess when I made this video, I'm just trying to get across to you guys that no one is coming to help you and that you are your own first responder. Because the system could break down. 
911 could be, you know, overloaded. There may be a shortage of cops, a shortage of EMTs, or EMS workers, or paramedics, and they just can't get to you in time. Think about if there was a major cyber attack, a grid down, or if there was a major terrorist attack in America. I'm talking about a, a, a Mumbai type attack. Active shooters everywhere. You know, the Black Awakening takes place. And I would do a video about that. And it's just chaos everywhere. And there's no 911. Or what if there is something simple like your neighbor is working on his roof and he falls down off the ladder and hurt his back. And you dial 911, but you're placed on hold. Or there's a car accident and a car has been overturned. And you dial 911 and you're placed on hold. Or somebody is kicking in your door, it's the middle of the night, and you look out your window and there's three masked gunmen, and they're kicking in your door. And you dial 911 and say, hey, someone is kicking in my door. And you're placed on hold. What are you going to do? So think about those things, because even though California and uh, Oakland and in Portland, they're experiencing these things, it could happen at any time to any city, county, town, wherever we live at. So guys, stay alert, protect yourself at all times. It's kinda like what the referee tells a boxer when a boxer steps into the ring, keep your hands up and protect yourself at all times. Remember to, to keep God first, pray without ceasing, stay alert, get your house in order because I see more chaotic stuff coming down the road. Until next time, Thank you. Take care. God bless.